Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So today we have lots of great Star Wars news including updates for The Mandalorian and all season 2 and we even have a comics update because Lucasfilm just gave us a new race story, one which ties into Kashyyyk but also General Grievous of all characters. But we begin with The Mandalorian. The next episode on Wednesday, season 3 episode 6 chapter 22 is directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. For many fans this comes as amazing news as she's directed some of the best Mando and Book of Boba Fett content. In season 2 she had chapter 11 The Heiress, which if you remember, introduced Bo-Katan to live action, and in the Book of Boba Fett she directed The Return of the Mandalorian, which by many accounts was a highlight of that show. I've seen a lot of fans call for her to direct her own Star Wars movie or trilogy. I would go as far as saying that Bryce is one of the most talented people at Lucasfilm. She understands the Star Wars universe better than most, and if you watch her in the behind the scenes Disney gallery for season 2, you get to understand just how amazing she is on set. She's pedantic and thorough, she knows the shot she wants, but also she makes everyone feel comfortable at the same time. She brings out the best in the actors, and if I were to guess, based on her other episodes, I'm gonna guess chapter 22 is gonna be very Mandalorian centric. So nothing to do with the New Republic or the other subplots. Whether it's Bo-Katan who is now going to recruit other Mansorians to unite them, or more story concerning the tribe and the armorer, maybe even the Darksaber or the Mythosaur, not to mention Moff Gideon is probably an Imperial Mandalorian, much like Gar Saxon. As the director who introduced Bo-Katan to live action in the first place, I'm speculating the next one is where Bo gets her Night Owls back, Koska Reeves and Axe Woves. Then, as I put forward in my episode breakdown, I think she's going to get Fen Rao and maybe even Sabine Wren, who at the moment we assume is with Ahsoka maybe even Boba Fett eventually. There are three episodes that now remain, and chapter 22 on Wednesday is 44 minutes and 14 seconds in length. That's without the intro and the credits, so three minutes longer than the last one. In other Mandalorian news, Zebaralios' cameo broke the internet, and Rebels fans everywhere rejoiced, especially with the return of Steve Blum as the voice, but according to his son on Instagram, the actor did facial capture for the role too. It was seamless, so not just the voice, and they're definitely teasing the Ahsoka show, which is going to give us the rest of the Ghost Crew in live action. And on the subject of the Mandoverse, another very talented director has been announced for Skeleton Crew. Dave Lowery of Green Knight directed one episode of the show. He famously worked on Pete's Dragon and the upcoming Pan and Wendy, and based on rumours and reports for Skeleton Crew, by all accounts, this week's episode of Mando was displaying much of what we can expect. Gorian Shard might be dead, but his pirates, including Vane, are the primary antagonists of that show. And so now guys, on to Andor. Over the last week we've had a bevy of images and videos taken from La Ciudad de las Artes y las Ciencias located in Valencia in Spain. But one character we've yet to see in Valencia is Diego Luna's titular character Cassian Andor, but that is until now. In brand new footage captured by Oscar Budding we see Diego Luna's Cassian Andor alongside Mon Mothma. The two have yet to meet on screen in Andor, and this scene that they're filming is going to showcase the first time they do. Cassian seems to be desperately pleading with Mon Mothma as they pace frantically, possibly keeping an eye out for Imperials. Cassian puts his arm in front of the senator as they see something ahead of them and stop in their tracks. Cassian takes Mon Mothma by the hands and intensely converses with the senator, trying to convince her to follow his lead and maybe to see through whatever plan they have going on. Mon Mothma seems to agree and she and Cassian begin to sprint forward, holding hands before Cut is yelled and the scene comes to an end. Bespin Bulletin also reports that Loni Young, Luthan Rail, and Claire Marquis are filming scenes in Valencia. The actors who play those characters were spotted. In season 2, Luthan Rail is still running various operations for the Grown Rebellion, and considering Skarsgård filmed a scene with O'Reilly in Valencia, you'd assume these events are all connected. Now we also know from set videos which we covered the other day, there is an Imperial presence wherever this is. Some fans think it could be Chandrilla. Bespin Bulletin theorised this scene showcases Mon Mothma's attempt to escape the Empire's grasp, and this could be after she denounces the Senate, in which case, as we know from Star Wars Rebels, she's about to meet the Ghost Crew. We're getting them later in the timeline in the Ahsoka show, because they also appear in Andor. Now as I say, other shots filmed in Valencia seem to show Chandrilla, which could connect to Mon Mothma's daughter's wedding, the wedding of Leda. But they also mention it could just as well be Coruscant. In either case, these images and videos are outstanding. They really make me miss Andor. I can't wait for season 2, which comes out in 2024. 
And so now, my dear friends, before we talk about some Star Wars comics, some amazing news for The Mandalorian, Parrot Analytics has found that the audience demand for The Mandalorian Season 3 is 59.3 times higher than the average TV series in the US. This is for the last 30 days. So despite initial reports that The Mandalorian was struggling, five episodes into Season 3, this no longer seems to be the case. Really amazing stuff. And with three episodes away from the finale, I'm sure the audience is going to be massive on the last day in three weeks time. And just before we move on, let me know in the comments down below if you're enjoying season three as much as the first two, which has been your favourite season so far. And so now my dear Meglorians, it seems as though Lucasfilm have given us another piece of Rey's story. I know when it comes to the sequel trilogy, a lot of fans are a bit put off, especially after the Rise of Skywalker, but there is a portion of the fandom, myself included, that with good writing and good direction, more stories with the sequel trilogy characters in the future would be great. And we've been talking a lot about the future of Star Wars films. What is the 2025 movie by Charmaine Obey-Chanoi going to be about? The one that after Damon Lindelof's departure is being written by Stephen Knight? Well, until we see Rey on screen next, the most recent comic of Star Wars hyperspace stories features one tale of Rey and Chewie between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. This is one of the biggest stories Rey has had in a while. I know she's been in other comics, she's been featured here and there, but this one is pretty big, so I want to go through it with you, and you can let me know if you like it or not. In this one, Rey and Chewie go to Kashyyyk. Basically, Rey needs a bit of a break from the Resistance, and so with Chewie, she goes back to the Wookiee homeworld for the Life Day celebrations. So here we go. Towards Kashyyyk, the Millennium Falcon did roam. Rey says, Thanks for bringing me to meet your family, Chewie. I'm excited. To celebrate Life Day, Chewie brings his friend Rey to his childhood home, and then he gurgles in Shriwook. I'm not gonna do it. Life Day is something every Wookiee loves a lot, but all is at risk due to this bounty hunter's plot. And here we have a blue Twi'lek, a female Twi'lek, who looks a little bit like Ayla Sakura, but this is a new bounty hunter, so she's on their tail. Life Day is a celebration of family and joy, and here we have a small group of Wookiees coming to meet the pair. They step out of the Falcon, and a chance for Rey to meet Chewie's not-so-little boy, and this is huge, a canon reference to a grown-up Lumpy, Lumpawaru, we saw him in the holiday special. Rey says, Nice to meet you, Lampawaru. I'm Rey. And because the love of family sometimes comes at a cost. And the really tragic thing is that Lumpy knows every time Chewie goes off on a mission and leaves the homeworld, there is a chance he never returns. It's really cool to see Lumpy all grown up. And just to note, he's been mentioned in other canon sources too, like the Aftermath trilogy and Empire's End. The ponytail's quite funny. Life Day also honours all those we've lost. Oh, is this the Life Day tree? Rey asks. And then we see some of the holograms of Wookiees, and it's a very sacred day. We see some young Wookiees, some older Wookiees. So Rey's enjoying Kashyyyk, but they say the serenity wasn't to last long. Rey says it's beautiful, but the bounty hunter has arrived, and we find out on Rey's head a bounty had been placed, a hefty price. And a bounty hunter with a ridiculous name, Moar Jaranda, was not there to play nice. Rey says, wait, something's not right, I feel it. They say there's one thing to remember if you're a bounty hunting rookie. And by the way, guys, here we have Viveen, a Wookiee we saw in the early hyperspace stories. So the bounty hunter shoots, Rey does a really awesome maneuver in the air, and she says, Chewie, we've got company. It says it's not wise to upset a Wookiee, and then we see Chewie and some other Wookiees coming to save the day. For Wookiees, you see, whether filled with angers or joy, are fierce and strong, and make a mighty noise, and so a battle ensues. The bounty hunter says, and here I always heard Life Day was a day of welcoming. Well, not if you're going to shoot other Wookiees. All of the furry beasts start shrieking, and Rey can't stand it. Oh, the noise. Now, with the Life Day tree threatened by fire, and the Wookiee situation seeming quite dire, Rey was regretting coming as a guest, and I can't believe they did this. Lumpy's been shot. And Rey feels guilty because she endangered the other Wookiees. So here we have Chewie comforting his son, and I really hope he's not dead. I guess we're going to find out in a minute. Rey says, I've got her. The bounty hunter knew that she was now the one hunted. The ruse was very clever, of course, but Rey had something more than cleverness. They say Rey had the force. Rey tells Chewie, she's not this way, I can feel it. It's me she wants. Don't follow, she's already caused enough harm. And thank the maker, Chewie and Lumpy are both okay. Friendship and family is what Life Day is all about. Chewie gurgles, and Rey says fine, but this is not how I wanted to help you celebrate. No one will be left alone on a dangerous scout. Rey says, she's close, I can feel it. Well, you made this easy for me. The bounty hunter jumps out and jumps onto Lumpy. Rey and Chewie put their hands up. The Jedi says, I'm the one you want, just let them go. 
The bounty hunter replies, two Wookiees for the price of one is too good a deal to resist. Unfortunately, this bounty hunter doesn't give up. Ray says, I'm so sorry, Chewie. I should never have come with you. Chewie says, it was looking like a life day dinner when no one would slip. Let's head back to my ship, says the bounty hunter. Mill and Vivert are going to be so jealous I picked up extra fuzzballs. Ray's confused. She says, Mill, Vivert, I assumed you were working for Kylo Ren. Oh, I am. Those are just a couple of other bounty hunters I have a friendly wager with. We like to keep a tally. Ray responds, how many bounty hunters are after me? All of us. It's not personal. Offers for that many credits don't come around often. Excuse me, it feels a little personal for me. Fair enough, responds the bounty hunter. There is a snap. What was that? Says the bounty hunter. But Vivine, the Wookiee charging without fear. Vivine, no, exclaims Ray. Our heroes were saved, but life hung in the balance. Hang on, we'll get you. And just like a father, Vivine chose valiance. In case you missed it, guys, Vivine lost her dad to General Grievous. That was in a previous comic. And then the comic makes a little visual joke. Life Day may have turned upside down. Grab my hands, says Ray. The bounty hunter holding onto the Wookiee. Luckily, she lets go, and the bounty hunter falls in. That is not the way of the force which Ray serves. So Vivina saved, and when they returned to the village, they saw quite a sight. Life Day would not be ruined this night. Ray says, now we have to decide what to do with you. Ray chooses forgiveness, thanks to the Wookiees, by giving her a Life Day orb. Oh, thank you, as Ray says, happy Life Day. And then all gathered round for a marvellous feast. And Moir, yes, the bounty hunter herself, carved well, blasted the roast beast. And though the roaring and feasting was fun, Life Day is a time of reflection for some. This is so heartbreaking, guys. It's Vaveen, looking at her deceased father, who she lost to General Grievous. Ray comes up to her. Celebrations make me miss my parents too. I wanted to thank you for saving us. Someone special gave me this. Now this is really interesting because Ray gets out Vivine's old toy from when she was a little girl when she met Padme, Anakin and Obi-Wan. So how did Ray get this? She says, someone gave it to her long ago. And the force keeps telling me, you should have it. Happy life day, Chewie. And Chewie roars. Vivine looks at her dad. This was such a touching story. I really love it. The Wookiees are like a comfort species every time I see them, and I really like Vivian, the Wookiee. She brings the theme of family, and generally speaking, I really enjoyed this comic of Rey, another story in the sequel trilogy timeline, and some really awesome connections to Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan, because they're the ones who saved her. So share your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. If you enjoyed this comic and this video breakdown, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you always.